My mini pontoon boat project is mostly to learn about working with fiberglass. I'm not an expert, but I'll show you what I've learned so far. So when buying fiberglass, there's two main types. You can get chopped strand mat, which is cheaper. And it's basically little strands of fiberglass that are bound together with a styrene binding agent. And if you're using polyester resin, that binding agent dissolves. Um, but if you're putting epoxy resin on it, it mostly doesn't. I made it work, um, but it's not really designed for use with epoxy resin. There does exist chopped strand mat that works with epoxy resins. You want to search for e-glass and make sure the description specifically says it's epoxy compatible. Um, it's really easy to conform to curves if the binding agent releases. It's also cheaper. Um, I bought a, a thick roll. It's two ounces per square foot, and it's 40 inches wide and 165 feet long for 150 bucks. Now fiberglass cloth um, comes in lots of different weaves. I just got plain weave, um, and mine was four ounces per square yard, uh, 39 inches wide by 50 feet long, cost me $75. So the cloth um, is what you typically use with like a cedar strip canoe. Now for resin, there's polyester resin, which is less expensive, about one third the price, um, but it makes toxic vapors and you have to use organic vapor respirators. Um, but it does um, dissolve the styrene binder on the chop strand mat. Um, in my project, I used a gel coat that is polyester resin based gel coat. Um, there does exist epoxy gel coat, but West Marine didn't sell that. Now, epoxy resin is what I used for my fiberglass. It's more expensive, um, but it's safer to use, and it's a little bit better than the polyester resin at sticking to stuff. Um, I used the West Marine 105 resin and the 206 slow hardener to give myself more working time um, as I'm just kind of learning this. Um, West Marine's a little expensive. I'll probably go with something from Raqqa um, in the future, which is a little bit cheaper. So epoxy resin is easier to measure than the um, polyester resin for mixing because the parts come in, you know, one to one or one to five, as opposed to 100 to one or 100 to two with the MEK catalyst for the polyester resin. Um, I'm using hand pumps from West Systems. They automatically measure the resin and the hardener in the right proportions as long as you use the same number of pumps of each. You're going to need some mixing containers. Um, I like these plastic ones because after the epoxy cures, you can kind of bend them and break it out and pull it out as a single piece. Um, if you are not using measuring pumps, you're going to have to get measuring uh, marks on your mixing containers. So when you're laying down chopped strand mat that's thick, you want to coat the undersurface first with epoxy to make sure you get good adhesion. Um, because when you're putting epoxy on the top of this, mostly it goes through the entire mat, but I can't guarantee it's going to get to the bottom of everywhere. And so that's why I kind of paint the surface with epoxy before I put the chop strand mat down. And these fiberglass rollers, they look like paint rollers, but they're aluminum and they have ridges on them, are necessary when working with large flat areas. They push the resin into the fibers, they distribute it around, they pop air bubbles. Um, but you need to use acetone to clean the epoxy resin off the roller before it hardens. Now, as I said in my last video, using plastic wrap on the nose cone um, didn't lead to a super smooth nose cone. I had to fix that with a lot of work and a lot of Bondo later on. In my second pontoon, I used EVA foam to make the nose cone nice and smooth. Now, between each layer of fiberglass, I sanded the surface to smooth it down, make sure that the next layer can adhere well to it because the epoxy resin is very smooth when it dries. So you want to sand that to give places for the next layer of epoxy to come down and make a grip to. Now, when you're sanding it, it makes fiberglass dust. You do not want that your lungs rise. Make sure you have a, a P100 respirator and eye protection when you're sanding it. For the connection between the pontoon and the deck, I'm embedding these stainless steel T-nut threaded inserts into the fiberglass. I used honey wax on the hex bolts to give a handle to position the T-nuts and to keep fiberglass from sticking to the threads and to keep it out of the threads on the inside. So I pushed the T-nuts into the bottom layer of fiberglass while it was still wet. And then after that dried, I put a few more layers on top to reinforce the nut locations.
the fiberglass fibers from the chop strand mat do kind of wrap around the bolt when you hit them with a chip brush. Um, but due to the wax, you can unscrew them and then cut off any protrusions off with a saw. Note that these fiberglass strands with the resin are sharp and they're pokey. I recommend using gloves when you're working near them. When joining the top and the bottom pieces on the nose cone, I just cut small pieces of chop strand mat that I soaked in resin and rolled around the edge. I use a chip brush to dapple the edges down. So in a project like this, there's a lot of sanding involved. I sand each layer to, and I have to vacuum up the dust after sanding it. Um, you definitely want to have a P100 ventilator when working around fiberglass dust like this. For each layer of fiberglass, I make sure the surface I'm bonding to is as clean as possible. Then I cut the fiberglass I'm going to epoxy down to fit the area, and I dry fit to test it. Because my plastic wrap nose cone wasn't very smooth, I had to learn how to use Bondo to fill in the low spots. I was initially going to use fiberglass like paper mache to do this, um, but decided that Bondo would be much faster as it takes a lot of work to sand down cured epoxy resin and fiberglass. I still spent a lot of time sanding Bondo, but doing the same with fiberglass would have been even worse. Moral of the story, make sure you're happy with the shape of your core before you start laying fiberglass over it. Here comes a montage of my Bondo work. After doing several layers of chop strand mat for strength, it's time to move to the more expensive woven fiberglass cloth for the final layer that's against the water. So compared to chop strand mat, this stuff is a joy to work with. It takes a lot less resin as it's a lot thinner. You still have to be careful to cut it to the appropriate size so it lays smooth. Unlike the chop strand mat, the woven cloth will work well with epoxy resin and as air bubbles don't get embedded in it, it's a lot thinner, it almost disappears and the underlying surface shows through very well. In my case, it's ugly bondo work on the nose cone, but I'm planning on gel coating the entire pontoon anyways. Cedar strip canoe, this is not. Here is one big piece over the entire pontoon. Notice how I'm slicing and stacking the strips over the flat rear to make the curves work. I'm doing similar cuts and overlapping wraps around the curve of the nose cone. I used a flexible scraper to draw the epoxy over the entire surface and a disposable chip brush to spread the epoxy, especially under the overhang. After some more sanding, I'm ready to gel coat the entire pontoon. I'm wrapping my bolts in painter's tape to keep the gel coat off of them. West Marine only had polyester resin gel coat, so that's what I'm using. The outside layer needs to be with wax to cure hard. If you're going to do multiple layers, you can buy without wax for the interior layers, which stay tacky, allowing the next layer to be put down without sanding. I only wanted to buy one gallon, so I just sanded between layers to help with adhesion. Using this polyester resin based gel coat required that I obtain an organic vapor respirator and that put this project on hold for six months during the COVID pandemic as buying respirators of any type got difficult. The MEK used to catalyze the polymer resin is mixed at a 1 to 3% ratio to the gel coat. I recommend aiming for the high end of that range initially and using less if you find it cures too quickly. I started at the lower end and my first coat took days to set up. After working with the polyester resin based gel coat, I'm very happy that I used epoxy resin for all my fiberglass work. That stuff is nasty and absolutely requires a respirator rated for it. I'd recommend working in an area away from your house if you have one. Even with the garage doors on both ends opened, fumes leaked into the house and I had to open all the windows on several occasions. The gel coat went on with a regular disposable paint roller. I used three layers overall, sanding the first two before putting the next on top of it. 